Hey there, it's Ben Hyde here with BCC Hardware, and today we're taking a look at the Archer uh, C3150 from TP-Link. Now, normally, TP-Link hasn't been associated in the past with high-quality products, but the Archer C3150 is a Moomimo device that uh, actually comes across as a really high-end device and and it just starts with with the graphical user interface and today we're just going to take a quick look through that and uh, see what we got going on one of the things I really do like about this is, is the clean interface and actually how how snappy it is so when you first log in you've got your basic you know internet settings uh, your, or your network map and if you have nothing special weird crazy going on with your network it's just a matter of dropping into the internet settings under the basic tab and you know choosing dynamic IP or static whatever and and carrying on from that it works really really well really slick moving down to wireless um, again just basic settings you can either enable or disable your wireless networks hide or or show your SSID rename them add the password save done wireless security setup that fast works really well Onto the USB port settings now. You've got some storage options. It has two USB ports. One of them is a USB 2. The other one is a USB 3 port, so you can actually plug in quite fast drives. And the, the CPU inside the router seems to be fast enough to easily be an entry-level network-attached storage device um, just to, to share files quickly across your network. So once you log in, or once you have your drive plugged in and it's enabled here, your, your folder sharing, uh, you actually just go to your network place, uh, and it's like slash slash, you know, the Archer C1 3150 and you're connected or you can, of course, can join by IP address um, by default. This was enabled and it works really well. Uh, moving on, you got your print server option as well, which is handy if, if you've got a, you know, one printer that is not network uh, compatible, but yet you want to share across your network, plug it in by USB port, install the print driver on your machine, uh, install the, the USB printer control utility as well from, from TP-Link and you're done super simple and it works well also you've got parental controls now this is this is fantastic if you're running you know uh, a network with with young people on or perhaps you want to block specific site access or keyword access uh, to a group of people you can specify that by by device name by mac address you know when, when you want it to happen you can either blacklist stuff or you can whitelist it and then only allow certain traffic through on each specific machine there's not you know it's not a blanket rule for everything it's a, a per machine rule that, that works quite well moving on to guest network access by default this this was disabled but we enabled it for the review uh, and then of course you can hide your SSIDs which kind of doesn't make sense to enable a guest network hide the SSIDs but one thing that, that you do want to make sure that by default it was allow guests to see each other that that's okay ish um, but also you don't want to allow guests to access your local network and that was disabled by default which is how it should be for most situations moving on to advanced now We've got uh, some options here. Now, now the status on advanced is a little bit more detailed, and um, you can see that, that you've got you know 2.4 or 5 gigahertz status as well um, for your LAN, your IPv4, IPv6, uh, I guess network access as well. I mean, all that is per per thing. And you can see that even this, this switch is nice and quick. It's very responsive, unlike some other routers that look very fancy. Uh, however, the interface is quite laggy. So we'll blast on through here, again, just to save you guys a ton of screenshots and, and stuff over there at bcchardware.com, we'll blast through this. You've got your internet settings here. In, in the advanced ones, you actually can, can, can use a custom MAC address um, if, you're, if your uh, ISP requires a specific MAC address. And then, of course, your LAN settings, you can specify you know, what you want for your LAN settings, what, you know, what type of uh, you know, range it is, and then, of course, your subnet mask and all. Uh, this router does support IPv TV. IPTV, rather, so you can adjust, you know, set the settings there. Uh, DHCP server as well. Uh, basic, th these are just basic stuff. Uh, in the DHCP server also is where you will set your, your DHCP reservations for specific hardware, which we've done for a Raspberry Pi server, which actually is running a, a, a CTF deathmatch and team deathmatch T World server. So if you want to join and play us uh, some Volkland T-Worlds, definitely you can look that up or, or give us a shout in, in the comments and we'll make sure we get you guys added in there. Um, for dynamic DNS, again, it kind of supports the, the standard 
dynamic DNS. Right out of the box, it supports these two, Dyn DNS or no IP, but you can go to the registrar uh, as well. You'll choose different things that you want to do there for, for that uh, as well. Set up your dynamic DNS service. Uh, advanced routing, simply, you know, there's some definitely, you can assign specific static routes. You've got your system routing table, just, just standard stuff, but it's some stuff that routers don't make easily accessible or is easy to understand, and they give you all that information as well. So under wireless settings now, under the advanced wireless settings, you can actually enable Smart Connect, which basically is just choosing the right frequency band, which is the, the best performance. So if you want to get the most performance out of it, in theory, that should work. However, um, sometimes some of the smart stuff, you know, it uses more CPU overhead. So it depends what all your router is doing there, which, which of course you can specify that for, for either or, which is fantastic. WPS enabled by default. Some people say that's a, a security issue. You can disable that if you want. Either way, we, we're leaving most of the stuff default for the review uh, and WPS is just very simple. And Mac filtering, nothing really exciting to see there. Um, yeah, just, just standard Mac filtering stuff that you can either add, block devices, um, you know, do, do what you need to do there. One interesting thing uh, with this router is the fact that you can actually schedule your wireless. You can schedule your 2.4 or your 5 gigahertz wireless separate to allow you know it to be down for, let's say, towards the evenings. If this is your home router, you don't want your kids to be uh, connected using their, their wireless devices on your Wi-Fi. After a certain time, you can you know have this on a schedule, which is kind of nifty, kind of cool. Also, then we go to statistics. It kind of just shows what you know what packets here are being used on the on the wireless. This is all under wireless, so these are our wireless statistics there. Um, then going on to guest network, it's just the same thing, basically slightly different layout, but same thing. Enable it, disable it, change your SSIDs, um, hide it, that sort of thing. Carry on. Now, for NAT forwarding, this this router supports you know all the the basic NAT forwarding services that we would expect for the gateways. Uh, and as far as virtual servers go, this is where you can add your firewall rules. And adding a rule is, is super simple. Actually, we're going to add one here this time. So let's just say we're going to add, uh, we're going to add a telnet. We're going to do telnet to a, an internal IP of, of uh, yeah, we're just going to try and make this quick as we go. I know I've got no IPs that, the address is that. Okay, it's done. There's no applying. There's no figuring anything out. There's no, you know, system reboot required. Anything like that, it is just super fast to add services uh, to the, the virtual services ports open in the firewall. Port triggering, again, super, super straightforward, and it works. You can do your DMZ as well and your UPnP also. Moving on to advanced USB storage settings. I mean, you can scan, see if there's a different device attached, or you can safely remove it here. And this here is where you do your sharing. So earlier in the basic, we said, you know, you can, it just shows up in the network. But if you want to restrict access to users, you can actually create user accounts here. Uh, then you can sp specify which drive you want them to, to be able to log into or both. And you can enable some different services there as well. Uh, of course, if you enable authentication, you will need user accounts. So there's that. Uh, print server, again, exactly the same as the basic. Uh, also, parental controls, exactly the same here in the advanced section as it is the basic. They just repeat some of these things in the advanced setting uh, section so you don't have to be flipping back and forth. You, you can just do everything through one tab if, if you want more control, as well as the basic control as well. So bandwidth control, you can enable this. You can specify your upstream, downstream. And then the nifty thing is here, under controlling rules, if you, if you have a limited amount of bandwidth, you can add controlling rules such as the IP range you want to control or the port range, what, what protocol they're doing, and then what their upstream and, and downstream bandwidth is. So imagine this at, at a LAN event like Volclan that we had. We did not have this router at the event. I wish I had pulled it out because it would have been pretty nifty to see this working uh, in, in action on a very heavy network. Because so we've got, you know, the, the general attendees, you know, we can specify them to be one to 200 uh, IP range. Um, and then the upstream bandwidth will be no more than two to five megabits per second. And the downstream, let's say it can be five to 10, but they can't get any more than that. So nobody really suffers uh, throughout the weekend, which would have been, which would have been really nifty. So that has this, a lot of routers don't have IP ranges or port ranges. They just have a matter of you can prioritize whether it's a one, two, three, four, five, um, but you don't have a choice to control the bandwidth for specific ranges. So that's a really cool feature with this as well. 
Onto security now, you've got the simple things like your stateful packet inspection firewall. You can enable DDoS protection as well as, you know, all this all this other UDP flood attacking filtering and that sort of thing. And you can forbid, you know, the WAN ping or LAN ping. You can, you can do all sorts of stuff like that if you're required to step up things just a little bit differently. So over here on access control, you can actually see what's connected to your network quite quickly. And then you can actually you know, ch check a box and you can boot it. So you have that option to block stuff and blocking it, it is very quick and simple. It's not a big reboot, you know, saving, applying settings. You just hit it, apply, boom, done. It, it's it's fantastic. So over here on the Mac binding, you know, you can you can delete stuff. You can you can bind stuff. You can reserve it. You can do what you need to do there as well. Uh, over in IPv6, that supports if, if your ISP or you want to run a network based on IPv6, you actually have full support for that for your for your LAN as well as for your WAN. So that's worth noting if, if you're moving that way. Um, VPN services. Now here for your server, you actually can, it can be the server. It can also connect as a client. Uh, you've got ways to, you know, up to upload or generate certificates, your configuration files and more for open VPN, PPTP, as well as, and then monitor what VPN connections are connected, what they're doing and so on and so forth. So quickly here, as we wrap up under system tools, there's actually quite, quite a little to look at here, but we'll be quick basic time settings, right? Change your time settings, enable daylight taping time schedule. Um, then you can run your diagnostics and not just do basic ping trace route, but you can actually specify parameters with those to see kind of what, what exactly you want to do that way. Firmware upgrade is uh, self-explanatory backup and restore your files as well, as well as a factory reset all there as well. Um, account management, change your user password, change your username or add a username. And, and you can do that there for the whole router management. Uh, you can disable router management. I don't suggest that, or you're not going to be able to, to to access in. Although that is that is uh, internet-based router management. So if you do that, you'll probably have to change a different port, and you can of course port forward under your uh, security tab there. So on the system logs there, I mean it logs everything. There's pages and pages of logs that it does that you can actually check stuff out to see what's going on there, um, as well as your SNMP client agent as well. And then, of course, your statistics, like what's going on, who's using what, you know, what kind of traffic is going on here. We've enabled that. And then, of course, lastly, your your system parameters. What is going on? What is your configuration set to? You can save those into files, so you can use those for diagnostics, troubleshooting, and then some. So really, that's the basic and the advanced. You can, of course, you can log out, reboot the router, just one click. Sometimes the reboot feature, if you need to do something, is buried so deep, it's hard to get to. But you know, TP link gives you gives you access to that very quickly. So overall, very impressed with this router. I mean, TP link previously in the past when they first came out, you know, were popular in North America, it was super entry level. If you bought a TP link, it's because you're broke, you want a router, but you can't afford a good one, quote unquote, good one. Nowadays, you've got incredible performance, 3150 uh, AC with Mumimo. So multiple user, multiple input, multiple input, multiple output on a great priced router that you're not compromising on performance or quality. So if you want to check out more performance, make sure you head out over to bcchardware.com, check out our full review of the TP-Link uh, Archer C3150. That of course is there with, with more images of the device and all the other little fancy features it can do. And as well, this was just a quick run through of the router interface. So check out that full review over at bcchardware.com. Once again, I'm Ben Hyde. Thanks for checking this out. We will see you next time.